Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise here on Sunday morning, February 28, 2016. So I'm getting ready to bring you my doomsday sermon. But before I launch into that, I just wanted to share with you a new Humpty Dumpty tribe site I have found called the Fuki Cafe, F-U-K-I Cafe, Fuki Cafe, and their newest subscriber, and I found them just, you know, hanging around down in the rabbit holes in YouTube on a Saturday night, and this film, this video clip, which is actually uh, probably from a Guy McPherson, it's Guy McPherson, behind it all anyway, uh, called Fuck It at the Fuki. Fuck It at the Fuki. And uh, what they're talking about here is reaching the fuck it point in one's life. What it means to reach the fuck it point. And I'm, uh, I will talk about, imagine this, I uh, have my little tail talking about his own fuck it point. But before I do, I want to uh, play a couple of other short clips. As I say, my computer will only play for a few seconds before it goes off. Hopefully, we'll have time for a couple of fuck it comments. This first one is from a fellow named Dylan Thompson. Never heard of this man, Dylan Thompson. He sounds like a great guy. Uh, so, Dylan, give us your take on the fuck it point. This is coming in at the end of his comments. I just wanted to make sure I got his closer. Take it away, Dylan. So, it's pretty easy for me to say fuck it at this point because the health of the dominant culture and industrial civilization requires the slicing up and destruction of ecological communities, those communities that provide the fabric of all life the living matrix from which we all are born. So I say, fuck it. Um, let's start promoting disruption. There you go. Let's start promoting disruption, what he was saying, of the <coughs> dominant paradigm. And of course, no, uh, no discussion of fuck it moments would be complete without checking in with my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero Derek Jensen so I'm gonna play what Derek has to say until the internet cuts me off take it away Derek what is your spin on the fuck it moment um, those in power are killing the world um, they're not going to stop and um those of us who are resisting that are fully aware that those in power have tanks and guns and airplanes. We're also fully aware that the majority of people care more about um, their computers or internet access or um, their access to consumer goods than they do life on the planet. So what I'm trying to say is that the odds are stacked against us or also we're, we're really fucked. And people can say we're fucked in multiple ways. They can say it dismissively, but the people I really care about say it in the spirit of fuck it. That <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The spirit of fuck it. You tell them, uh, Derek. So, anywho's. You know, the fuck it moment. I have uh, been talking about the fuck it moment here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe for years now. For those of you new to this tribe, I, I reached my own, my own first level of fuck it back in 2008 when I made, as I recall, $113,000 as a real estate agent and house flipper 
when uh, in the middle of uh, a successful real estate career living in a beautiful home <clears throat> in South Austin, Texas, uh, I took Terrence McKenna's advice uh, to clean my disc with uh, psilocybin mushrooms, San Pedro cactus, and ayahuasca. And it did clean my disc and helped me arrive at the fuck it moment. And where basically the fuck it moment is, is when you understand that, that uh, as Derek said, we are fucked. That there is no way out. There is no way out of this trap. And, but, but even, even while I've been doing this, what I do, being a doomsday prophet here for all these eight years, I've still been uh, fighting the, uh, the fuck it urge. You know, it started out by you know, moving to the Peruvian Amazon in, um, down there in South America thinking I could somehow get out of the matrix by, by trading my four bedroom, three bath house for a, a little palapa in the Peruvian Amazon in, in some goddamn disco from hell full of clueless morons followed me all the way to the Amazon and here I am eight years later in the rainforest of, uh, of St. Croix Virgin Islands uh, you know squirreled away in some little remote corner and of a rainforest on a, on a tropical island living on the edges of an eco-lodge, uh, you know, with, with, with my back against the wall and just trying to stay out of the line of fire, uh, you know, and I, and I, and I try to take a, a, a walk through the rainforest and all I do is bump into if it's not just mountains of trash that clueless morons have thrown all on the ground I'm getting run over by these goddamn ATVs with all of these uh, goddamn uh, little survey flags flapping in the wind everywhere, the bulldozers cranking up. You can probably hear some goddamn planet eater going on through the forest here on Sunday morning. I try to watch a sunset. and uh, there, There's one of these goddamn cruise ships uh, with 5,000 fucking clueless morons on it blocking out the sunset. Y you know? Uh, it's, just, it's just how do you... How do you escape? I, I, I go and, and get myself a, a, a little dog because I got no one else to talk to and my little dog doesn't want to hear any more of my shit than anybody else. And, and yet I've still, uh, you know, been unable to completely extricate myself as we all are from this dominant culture that is killing this planet but I guess the universe several times in the past couple of weeks I've gotten three more messages from the universe that uh, that you're done with it Hambone um, you know a after all of this I was uh, the, the, the three reasons I had for leaving paradise uh, full of planet eaters though it may be to go back to that goddamn Babylon uh, a little bit west of here you know what what was I doing uh, I, I was going to this big music festival you know just trying to take a few days off out of the trap of my own mind to play some music uh, with a bunch of my clueless moron friends and now I find that the goddamn corporate police state 
telling me I can't bring my little dog in, in, into their fucking music festival. You know, so there was strike one. And then uh, reason number two is that I was hoping for the, this job in uh, Santa Cruz, California, building this deck that your old eco-Nazi was, was hoping to, uh, you know, just make a complete laughing stock out, out of every single thing that I talk about. I, I had that job, this deck building job in Santa Cruz that fell through and then I was hoping for this job up in the Sierras to put a, a, a goddamn roof on some vacation cabin uh, up there in the Sierras and, and the universe has just told me on all three of these counts strike one strike two strike three so here I am it's finally happened uh, at age 56 here I sit uh, with, with the fuck it moment. Uh, I, I, um, I am facing the fuck it moment full in the face. You know, and, and the question is not so much reaching the fuck it moment. That, that's kind of the, the easy part is, is admitting the fuck it moment that there is nothing you can do there is not one goddamn thing any person on this planet any individual at this point can do to uh, turn this runaway freight train around you know it, it makes no difference whether uh, I'm making $113,000 a year being a clueless moron real estate agent uh, flipping foreclosures or, or whether uh, I'm, I'm sitting here in, in this chair with my back up against the wall in the rainforest at the edge of an eco-lodge. It makes no difference at this point. Uh, the, the, the full knowledge of this and you know going hand in hand with it uh, is, is the fact how many times have I had this uh, broken record rant the, the fact as, as Derek was just mentioning that that 99 percent of this planet and, 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 and including me still to this minute on one level uh, 99% of this planet completely oblivious, completely oblivious to the level of crisis on this planet. It, it, is, it, it is nowhere on their radar, and, and I'm lumping in uh, at least, I would say, 80% of these environmentalists. You know, I had my rant about Al Gore yesterday up there on his goddamn TED Talks with his little, with his little acolytes cheering him on, uh, acting like, uh, you know, we're going to turn this train wreck around with, with a few goddamn solar panels and windmills. And don't forget a few hydroelectric dams and nuclear power plants. Are, are gonna are gonna save this planet your fucking little solar panels and uh, and nuclear power plants and windmills and, and, and your little cell phone apps and drones and your little 3d printers pull your head out of your ass people you know, right here, and I'm not hanging around a bunch of clueless morons. I mean, I'm at an eco lodge, and, and uh, so we're we're discussing that Al Gore ran, and these two guys who who are not clueless morons well, on one level, I mean, with absolutely no trace of irony. This this man, this intelligent, educated uh, environmentalist, uh, who gets it on one level, actually informed me that if we just covered 
an area the size of Spain with solar panels, we would solve the planet's energy crisis. He said this with no trace of irony, taking a hunk of this planet the size of Spain. That's what we need to do. Uh, so, so even the people who get it completely clueless about, uh, about what's going on in this planet, then of course that leaves the 1% of us and then 90% of them you know, these goddamn uh, clueless moron conspiracy wackos uh, who, who get part of it, who understand the shallow end of the doomsday prophecy pool, completely clueless uh, about the deep end of the prophecy pool, which is the impending and escalating ecological collapse of this planet. Look at that little lizard. And, uh, you know, they're, they're as clueless as this little dog right here. Look at him, he's absolutely hypnotized by some little lizard, probably some invasive species climbing an invasive species of tree. Uh, you, you know? So you have these, these, these goddamn conspiracy wackos and everybody thinks that the few of us, the tiny few of us on this planet who have reached the fuck it moment and understand that we are fucked and there is no way out, we are a bunch of whack jobs. The eco-Nazi, as I facetiously refer to myself. Uh, we're, we're a bunch of whack jobs. And what we are is, if not just, just downright despised and maligned by that, uh, that uh, fat-ass moron Alex Jones conspiratard crowd, is we're just, we're, we're just irrelevant. If I had to sum up the world's opinion of me in one word, it would be irrelevant. Nobody wants to hear what the eco-Nazis have to say. And this is why uh, we, th this is why I, I have Humpty Dumpty tribe and whoever this person is behind the Fuki Cafe. Uh, and, and Guy McPherson on his blog, Nature Bats Last, which I'm going to be reading from here in my Doomsday Sermon uh, when, when I finish this fuck it moment rant. Uh, it, it, it's why we, why we just take it to cyberspace. It's kind of like, uh, it, it's kind of like the internet is now the adult version of, of our little uh, of our little fantasy friends, our, our little imaginary friends, you know, remember when you were a little kid and you had, and, and the world just got to be too much for you, so you would curl into a fetal position, pull the blankets over your head and huddle with your little imaginary friends. Well, this is just, this is just the grown-up version of it. So here I am uh, talking to my little imaginary friends on YouTube, uh, expecting it, maybe, maybe 50 people out of a planet of 7 billion people will e even click on uh, this rant, and, and 49 of them uh, will tune it out after about 5 minutes. I understand this. That it, that, that it is preaching to the choir. Uh, but, you know, the challenge, guys, uh, is not so, 
although it's a challenge for 99.9% .9 of the planet to even get to uh, the level of understanding to get to the fuck it point. Uh, the, the challenge uh, for those of us who finally get there, now that we're here, it's so we've reached the fuck it point. What next? What, the, what lies beyond the fuck it point? You, you know, I'm 56 years old. Uh, I, I could be around for another 30 or 40 years. Uh, I don't agree with Guy McPherson, kind of unfortunately, that humans are going to be extinct uh, in 15 years. Uh, perhaps naively, uh, I, I'm thinking that, that this little house of cards could remain standing for, you know, for another 30 or 40 years. And, and just trying to imagine my future. You know? And, and thank God I still have some little residue of, uh, of this house of cards in my own life that, that uh, what allows me to live here in this life of luxury in a 49 square foot tent uh, out in the jungle is the fact that I made a real estate investment. Uh, and, and I've got a, a few dollars of mailbox money coming in every month. Uh, I mean, my God, where would I be without this? And, and you know, I, I've noticed this, uh, th th this fuck it moment. A lot of people I meet in St. Croix who have a hell of a lot more mailbox money uh, than I do, talking about how they've reached the fuck it moment in Babylon, as we, we, they call the continental United States Babylon over here, that they've reached the fuck it moment in Babylon, and what do they do? They come over here to St. Croix uh, w w with their nest eggs, uh, you know, these, these, these giant nest eggs, and they come up here in, in, uh, in the hills of St. Croix and build their goddamn mansions uh, all over and, and get in their SUVs <coughs> driving up and down uh, talking about how they've reached the fuck it point with Babylon and, and, and they've just insulated themselves <coughs> but, but thank God I do have uh, a, a residue uh, of the very culture and global industrial economy that I despise and that I preach against, saving my ass uh, from, from what? I don't know. So I, I, I'm, now that these two jobs fell through over there in Babylon, this deck job and this roofing job, uh, it's... You know, I admit, it's pretty scary, guys. Anyone who acts like uh, unplugging from the dominant cultural paradigm in the global industrial economy, particularly voluntarily walking out of a six-figure job, and uh, these are the little, uh, the clueless morons from the cruise ship on their ATMs getting ready to go tear up this gorgeous turtle nesting beach. It's what you're hearing in the background. So anyway, yeah, I mean, I mean as I was saying, if you're thinking of simplifying your life and trading your four bedroom, three bath McMansion for a 49 square foot tent out in the jungle, uh, you know, I, I'm not recommending you do it. You'll get your little hollow moral victory, uh, but, but, but you'll, you'll lose a hell of a lot of friends in, in the process, you know.
though. Here I sit in my life of irrelevance with a capital I. Uh, and I guess the next chapter is bringing my, my doomsday sermon. I will wrap up the other side of the fuck it point. Here, here is the face of the other side of fuck it. Uh, my, my lonely, irre irrelevant existence out in the jungle talking to my imaginary friends on YouTube. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is my life. This is life on the other side of fuck it. And so let me wrap up this rant on the of life on the other side of fuck it and come back with you with my doomsday sermon picking up this theme of life on the other side of fuck it. But uh, enough of me yapping and we'll get to another fellow yapping about the life on the other side of fuck it in one minute for this rant. Bye, guys.